but it um, you do not Sorry about that, viewers. smashing windows randomly because you know small business owners are struggling people as well and I think small businesses are also suffering from the domination of the political and economic elite so we want to build a mass movement and um, yeah well, actually, why don't we, uh, let, let me describe how the GA is the agenda of the GA is at this point in particular. So we'll start with announcements, and uh, please keep it to, try to keep it to one minute. Um, and then there'll be uh, working group report backs, and report backs from other um, groups that are not part of Occupy per se, um, so that are related. Um, and we have one proposal, and uh, then discussions. So there's uh, one topic that has been proposed is uh, support, uh, court support for Occupy defendants. So that's one possible um, discussion topic, no problem. And, um, maybe we would want to talk about something else like how, uh, well, uh, there's going to be some action on September 17th, and OVAL is a part of uh, planning of one, in, but mainly in San Francisco, so maybe how we can expand that to both of them. Okay, so uh, does anybody have any announcements? Could you actually pass those flyers around? Oh, sure. Um, no, right there. Here. Yeah. So Dr. Lafayette um, was a leader in the civil rights movement. He is the co-author of the Kingian Nonviolence Curriculum. Um, and if uh, you know, folks probably know about the Poor People's Campaign, which has ridiculously close ties with everything that's happening in Occupy. He was the national coordinator of the Poor People's Campaign when King died. Um, was also a leader in the movement in Selma and the Nashville lunch counter sit-ins. Um, in terms of like thinking through how to make radical change. This is the guy who's actually done it. Um, he's going to be here for a speaking event as well as a two-day workshop in September. So, you know, if anyone can spread the word, I promise you this guy, every word that comes out of his mouth is gold. You'll be taking notes, for, like word for word, everything he says. Um, it'll be worth coming to check out. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's Thursday, September 20th. Yep, that's the speaking event and then the workshop that weekend. Anybody else have an announcement? Um, I do. Um, okay, so um, this Thursday in the city, the CPUC Commission, um, California, California Public Utility Commission is having a hearing about um, San Onofre um, nuclear plant and shutting it down. Um, and there's going to be, uh, in, the, in the Occupy um, Environmental Justice Group in San Francisco, they're organizing um, a protest. So there'll be people outside the hearing with signs and banners. Um, and then they're also, um, we're also asking for people to um, sign up to speak at the commission to speak about, you know, the hazards of nuclear and specifically um, San Onofre, how, you know, I, I don't know if a lot of people are aware of just how, how bad, what a bad, poor state the nuclear plants are. We actually had a kind of whistleblower come to one of our meetings and who's actually done, um, like, investigations, and the, it's just horrible what he's told us about how poorly run and how many problems there are with these nuclear plants. So um, this is um, this Thursday, 9 a.m., um, and there'll be a press conference at 10.30. It's at the California State Building Auditorium, 505 Van Ness Street, across from um, City Hall. And there's a website. Um, if you're able to make a public comment, um, you have to sign up by the night before, and it's www.cpuc.ca.gov forward slash P-U-C um, forward slash about us. We'll have this in the notes. We always send out the notes after the meeting. So if anyone can um, 
and I'm hoping, I do a little writing, so I'm hoping to have a little something written up for our website about um, nuclear issues with some information so if people are able to go and make a public comment, you know, do a little research, or hopefully that will be up for Thursday. Or just come and hold up signs. So. <laughs> okay, thanks, Beth. Um, so, now we're going to move to working. I just want to make one sure. quick announcement for those of you oh, who sure. might be disheartened. I'm not going to be here for a little while. So that's because of my schedule. So if you don't see me, then don't think, oh, no, you know, not that I'm not great, but I'm in here. Right. People come out. Yeah. It's important. So and did, after yeah. in September. And, so, and just so you know, there's more people that come to these that are from Oakland that can't be here our court, a lot of our core members are away today, so. or having birthdays. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, now moving on to the working groups report facts. So I just wanted to explain to many of you are new uh, that um, OBAL has um, a uh, there are a number of working groups and. There's a way to become an official OBAL working group. And the reason for doing that, for having OBAL working groups, is for a working group to uh, work consistent with what OBAL stands for. Uh, not just be off on its own, but OBAL has a mission, and part of the mission is to be nonviolent and other kinds of direct action and other kinds of things. Yeah, and the increased parts. Yeah. Well, actually, so the notes for the, the GAs go on the website, so you can see it on the website. But um, those of you who signed the list, we have a, a, a group of people who have that I'll talk about in a moment um, that uh, you, can, you can discuss things also. Oh, right, okay. So before we go into the further into the work, Why don't the two of you introduce yourself briefly and describe why you're here? Mm -hmm. um, I'm Carly. Uh, I've been meaning to come to these since Janet told me about them. Um, I've been really busy, as I'm sure everyone has. That's kind of a lame excuse. But um, I came here because I was involved with a different nonviolent group who occupied Oakland and they didn't really get anything done. And um, I really want to see this movement survive because I think it's really, really important, especially in a presidential election year. Um, yeah, my name's Antal. Um, I don't know. I mean, I um, I came to the first meeting like I think it was a month ago, or maybe it wasn't the first meeting, but I came about a month ago. And um, I don't know. I want to see what you guys are up to. Let's see what's going on. So. You can see all the new faces. Well, can you wait? Because I let no. me explain. Because <laughs> I didn't really complete uh, describing. So um, we have a process for a working group, an existing working group, to become an OBAL working group, and that's uh, that was passed uh, as a resolution, um, and it's on uh, it's on the website. It's called Working Group Recognition Requirements, among which it says that. The working group has to have met three, at least three times and um, have meetings, etc. I mean, there's a number of bullet points, so that's how you can find out how to become one. And we want uh, the working groups to have a mission statement and, and guidelines to actually spell them out. Um, and then we will uh, we'll have space for any working group that is an official OBAL working group. On, on the website. There are other working groups that um, are not yet uh, official OBAL working groups and others that are not even wanting to become directly associated with OBAL that will appear to report back on also. And not just working groups, other kinds of uh, groups. So. Well, yeah, no, it almost answers the question, but I'm just wondering whether it would be possible for a working 
like this this collective that I'm still involved with, it is an Occupy Oakland Grooms Collective for it to be both. Because <laughs> I'm not sure that everybody would want to leave Occupy Oakland, but they may be willing to be also be part of OBAL. And I, because I would like to be able to bring what we do on this, you know, personally I would, I don't know how everybody else would feel about it. So I don't know if that's even... Okay, well, um, oh, we, we can. It's it, yeah. Let's hold uh, off on discussing that okay. here, and I can talk you know, okay. to you offline, or maybe we can talk about it as a discussion topic. Okay. It's a good. It's a good question. I think it would be a good discussion topic because it's something that comes up often. Um, there's the issues of. Uh, if the other groups you're associating with are also explicitly non-violent, and that, but anyway, so I think it's a good discussion topic. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, probably not today. We might not have time for. Okay. But, yeah. but we'll have next it. time. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. So let's start with OBAL working groups um, report backs, and um, I can start with comms communications. Um, so uh, there, I mentioned before that there's a Google group, an OBAL Google group, and there have been some issues where there have been long discussions back and forth, and people say, please, you know, uh, take it offline, or can we limit, or whatever. So what was decided last Sunday was that we, or that we would have two. Google groups to this. One would be for discussions and the other for announcements so that people have a choice to be like one or the other. And it was supposed to be done on Wednesday and uh, for one reason or another it didn't happen. The split, the actual, but it will happen. And <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing is that there, there are going to be some changes to the website that hopefully will be more included and have more real estate for real estate on the website for more things to be visible and organizing it in a better way. So that I'm done with the uh, comments. So how about... Uh, I'd like to report back on the um, Save CCSF campaign. Um, Can you, as part of the strategy, um, sure. I was starting with the combat working groups. And then the yeah, I mean, this, it's a little confusing because the Safe CCSF campaign was spearheaded by a few of us at OBAL, but through in conjunction with people in the Action Council of San Francisco and also um, the student groups at CCSF. So technically we didn't do it through Strat Act, but um, we have a, strat a strategy action working group whose main mission is to develop, to develop strategy and actions in conjunction with that strategy and direct actions. So this was kind of a direct action that OBAL got involved with where um, we worked with the students um, at CCSF and um, the Action Council of San Francisco and we had like kind of a big homecoming day um, at CCSF. Um, the Ideological Liberation Working Group, which is a, a OBAL working group, and their main mission is to develop messaging, pamphlets, information um, with a, in conjunction with other groups. So they, they did you know, this, they've done the financial crimes cards. I don't know if people have seen the financial crimes cards. That was the ideological liberation working group and basically wanted for, you know, Ben Bernanke and puts all his financial crimes. And so um, those, we all worked together and we developed um, a lot of information, um, flyers, pamphlets, and we spent the day at CCSF on the first day, um, handing out the information, approaching students. The students did a speak out in the center of the campus um, and had people come up and talk about why CCSF was important to them. And then we updated you know, people on the situation, which I don't know if everyone here is aware of. Oh, okay, so the accreditation committee of CCSF is um, threatening to pull its accreditation and basically 
CCO, City College of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So it's 90,000 students. It's one of the largest community colleges, I think, in the country. It is the definitely. Largest, the largest. Oh, okay. Wow. So um, basically, because of the budget cuts and which which emanate from the financial crisis brought on by the banks, um, their budget has been cut every year, and they're losing millions and. They have a very democratic process, and 92% of their revenues, or whatever you're calling them, goes to pay teacher salaries. So the accreditation committee was basically like, oh, well, you need to put more money into administration and streamline the process and stop, you know, putting so much money into actually, like, teaching people. <laughs> and um, so that you can implement all these cuts that are being, you know, forced on you. And one of the things that CCSF did was they um, took their emergency, they're supposed to have $10 million in emergency funds, and they um, used that money for paying teachers and let it go down to one million. But this is in violation of the standards. So they were given 14 areas that they have to improve on. And by October 15th, they have to come up with a plan or they're threatened with, um, they could get their accreditation revoked, which means like losing funds and that could happen at the end of this year. If they don't follow these draconian recommendations. So we have this campaign to educate students on what's going on, on how it relates to austerity and privatization. We did it with the Action Council of San Francisco and the students. We had to speak out, and we're planning on having more actions throughout the semester. So that um, that was great. Like on Wednesday, where a lot of us were there all day, and we talked to a lot of students. The speak out was wonderful. The students from um, the um, associated students had the mic all day and they're great speakers. So that's one of the campaigns we'll be continuing to work on. We also worked with another Occupy group called Occupy Forum in San Francisco. And the forum topic on Monday night was education under attack. And we had this woman, Kathleen Carroll, um, who's done all kinds of research. She's a whistleblower on the issue of privatization. And she was talking about all these conflicts of interest at all levels, on boards of education, chancellors, regents, who have financial interests in private education corporations that are benefiting as education budgets get cut. So anyway, that's the update. Um, no, you can go ahead. So, um, strategy action is also, uh, well, the, the, what we're, we have been referring to the CCSF action is, or issue is save CCSF from the 1%. Um, we, Stradact has been working on a direct action plan and it's almost, except we, we need to include Oakland and other, uh, since we've expanded, we started it when we were only meeting in San Francisco. So we still need to we get yeah. people to join the working group? Is that what well, actually, the Stradact uh, has meetings every Sunday after the GA. So at 7, wherever the GA is. So we're going to be meeting today at 7. And I, I uh, include that in the agenda. Um, there's also been planning for September 17th, and uh, will be part of what the Action Council has been planning. And I'll talk about that. Later. I forgot to mention that the Comms Working Group meets on Wednesdays at seven o'clock. Uh, wherever the working groups form meets, and we're going to be rotating working groups form. This working groups form is at 8 on Wednesdays. <coughs> it's all listed on the website. It's a little complicated. The working groups form, for people who don't know, is um, we ask that someone from each working group come um, so we can coordinate among working groups. And it's at 8 p.m. on Wednesdays, and we sometimes coordinate with the um, outreach working group in San Francisco. And um, yeah, it's a smaller meeting with 
you know, as many people as want can come, but generally to have someone from each working group there to talk and coordinate. Hope so. So next would be Obama Media. Um, oh, was I working group? Yeah, still work, working group. Is that work yeah. You can I would like that, to make, even though I'm not yet tied in with the yeah, environment, yeah. I want to report on some stuff that's going on in the East Bay. Yeah. So that if anybody here is interested, you can let me know. Can I do that now? Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, this was, I, I was part of the Environmental Justice Committee of Oakland, but it's sort of, I it hasn't met in forever, so I'm not even thinking it still exists, really. There is one in, in, in Obau, OSF combined, and I want to link in because the work that's going on that I'm sort of involved in over here is with 350.org and some community-based environmental groups and focusing on Chevron, mm -hmm. as well as stuff that's going on in Oakland. And there's going to be some major sort of community activity events coming up that I would like that OBAU can have a presence at if we, you know, plan for it in September, October, but focusing on focusing on environmental issues that are local, that are based in the communities, as well as um, just the whole threat of climate change and how it's affecting us. So, if anybody is interested in environmental work, you can talk to me, and we can. I can let you know what's going on that I know of, and we will get hooked in to the environmental justice working group that we aren't now hooked to. Okay. That's it. So um, then there's the OBA. There are four OBA working groups the Comms, Strategy Action, Media, and Ideological Liberation Working Group. Um, <laughs> so there, the OBA Media Working Group, anybody want to? Mark, you wanna... uh, I haven't been to a meeting. Well, um, I don't have meetings yet. <laughs> okay, well, I can tell you what I'm doing. Um, with this, is right now we're being live streamed right on the OBAU website for people. And what I really like to do is to see, because I know a lot of people can't make meetings on Sundays. It's, I'm usually only good for one meeting a day or one meeting a week anyway of any group organization. So I would like, but I'm more willing to like when I'm, in, when if I'm at home or something, well, then I can watch it on a live stream. and. And right, right now we have a capability where people can actually participate in the GAs. And so as part of, you know, I'd like to see the more more participation maybe maybe online. <laughs> because right now we have like like three times as many people watching this meeting than we than we have here. So, um, but they're not communicating with me. I'm checking, right? Um, but uh, uh, just, to, just in, in general, just including more, like working with the website and stuff like that. So, um, and there was something else I wanted to say, but I guess it wasn't that important. Um, <laughs> and I, um, I before um, I became involved in OBAU and all the craziness happened at OSM, um, I, I wrote a lot for the Occupy SF website. Um, I wrote like probably like 10 different articles, just um, attending events and then writing about the event and integrating like research into whatever issue it was. So um, I'm hopefully going to be doing that again. I've just been so busy like getting about going and going to other meetings. But um, yeah, I have a couple of articles in the works that, um, and if you want to um, write or live stream or photograph, um, for OBAU, um, we have our procedure is basically um, to join the group. You just have to send your piece of work to the group, and then we have a consensus process. Basically, as long as there's no major concerns or blocks, um, and you can give the rest of the group can give suggestions, then we'll post it. And um, after you do that, um, you become part of the group, and you just get on the Google group. And once we kind of increase our participation, because we have about, I guess, four people really, me and Clark and Carlos and one other person on media now, and um, and Janet. And um, once we increase our participation, we plan on having meetings once a month. But now we're just primarily communicating through the Google group. And yeah. Um, what kind of stuff is it? 
uh, like um, is it like newsletter um, newsletter stuff or just well, like, I mean that that would be something like if Charlotte wanted to start a newsletter, I think media mm -hmm. would be probably the appropriate working group to do it through, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a lot going on throughout Occupy, mm -hmm. so, um, you know, we could, like, Clark live streams different events and we post them on our website. Um, generally, right now, since we're more in the building stage, you know, we've had been involved in a few campaigns like the CCSF campaign, but we haven't really had our own action yet, although we're having a we have that in the works. Um, so reporting on the actions that are going on throughout the city and throughout Occupy um, for the website is great. And then we just, we do have in the um, guidelines, in the media guidelines that if it's not an OVAL action and the group doesn't have a nonviolent statement, we just want to like put some kind of disclaimer or make it explicit that, hey, we're reporting on this event but we did not, you know, endorse or organize it because we're not sure about the status of their nonviolence. Mm -hmm. So if people want to get on um, the media group, you can, um, do we have the media contacts on the yeah. website yet? Oh, well, well, you could just, um, I'll, I'll, I'll send a sign up around. And, yeah. Um, and, we'll <laughs> and just, um, there's, right. there's an email address, media at oval.org, when uh, we're challenged with who will actually look at these emails, you know, the, the email accounts. Somebody mm -hmm. has to go there and follow up. And so if you could just put like your area of interest, if you do writing, photography, newsletter, I put name, email, area of interest for media working group. So then uh, I'd like to report back on the nonviolence working group. Um, there, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, uh, there was strong interest in starting one and people signed up for it. And um, it's been uh, a little bit of a challenge to uh, organize the first meeting, but it's in process. A doodle was sent out to everybody who had signed up. And so please, Answer the doodle. If anybody else wants to be part of that, the nonviolent working group, um, pass around some people that also and uh, connect you up. Hazard, did you want to say anything about it? I'm no, I just got the doodle. Okay. The doodle. <laughs> something that wouldn't have made sense like five years ago. Oh, you'll find out. No. <laughs> I think it's when you try to figure out a name and like a time you can all meet. Yeah, yeah it's a survey to figure out the schedule. best meeting oh. time for people. Yeah, cool. Very so, great. Tool. But that's for the, if you're interested in, oh, that's for the nonviolent. Non oh, media for the media? And one of the things, I don't know, I know Kazoo said he's really busy, but um, one of the things, like I was saying, I think that Oval could do is if we do get our nonviolence working group going, we could have like maybe weekly or monthly um, nonviolence trainings for other groups and um, also like telling them about our strategic nonviolence statement because, you know, I think a lot of people when they hear nonviolence, they think, oh, I have to become Gandhi or, you know, a Buddhist or something. And ours is, you know, a little more um, broad. So it's strategic nonviolence. And although I know Kazu's group is more focused on philosophical. Right, I mean, it's, it's both. Yeah. Um, which is why I think people can come to our workshops and walk away having learned something without committing themselves on that level. Um, we do also have monthly workshops in the Bay Area. And if Obao wants to be listed as a co-sponsor or something, you know, we're more than happy to do that, so. So, uh, I also just wanted to report that outreach working group. Beth mentioned an out outreach per a working group that meets overall, that it's, it's mainly San Francisco based and it originated from Occupy SF uh, and it uh, has done some wiring for OBAL, but uh, two weeks ago at RGA here, there was also an interest in starting an OBAL outreach work group when we discussed different ways to do outreach. Uh, Jane, who's not here today, um, 
started a Google, Google group for the people who signed up for that. And I don't know if we would, but if, um, we could send around something for that as well if you're interested in joining that. So that would be separate from the already existing outreach work. So, okay. Um, there's one other uh, report back, sorry, that I wanted to give about the Action Council of San Francisco. Um, and um, actually, Beth, did you uh, maybe give a little background of what the Action Council is? And, and then I'll talk about what happened. There was a meeting today from 2 to 4. There's a meeting of Action Council in San Francisco, uh, near Civic Center Park, every Sunday. Yeah. So. Yeah, so um, the Action Council was started um, during the encampments um, in San Francisco when um, different nonprofits, labor unions, community groups came by and wanted to figure out how they can connect, how they can support the movement. And it was kind of hard at the encampment. You know, you would go there and not know who to talk to or what to do. So um, a few people started the Action Council to meet every Sunday um, explicitly to invite in um, nonprofits, unions, community groups. And um, when the encampments were raided and fell apart, it actually became one of the most stable things in Occupy because those groups were used to meeting every Sunday at the local two office, although they did start out meeting at the encampment. Um, so it has continued on, and they were the driving force in the um, January 20th financial shutdown. Um, so there's, it's, it uses a spokes council model. So basically, um, every either um, organization or affinity group, which is any group of three or more people, or a working group of Occupy, um, picks their spoke. Um, and that spoke is the person who gets to vote, or whatever you want to call it, in the consensus process. And they have a 90% uh, consensus, as we do in OBAO. And we have a 90% modified fallback consensus. But that's another. Anyway, so um, so they're meeting every Sunday. And um, they we worked with them on the Safe CCSF campaign. And um, right now, I think Janet's going to talk about September 17th and what's going on. Okay, well actually I'm going to hold off on talking about that because no. that's about what the proposal is about, oh. so I'll, I'll give it that as a background. But there were some other things that were discussed at the Action Council today and I would mainly report back on the CCSF action and where to go from there. Um, they are starting a website, OccupyActionSF.org. The Action Council is starting its own it's website. website yes. It's not an Occupy. It's a, it's a coalition, I guess. A, I suppose it's a spokes It's still Occupy. But Occupy is spokes yeah, council. Yeah, it's it's, I think they, they're calling themselves Occupy Action Council of San Francisco. Um, before I, uh, we, okay, so we, the next item on the agenda is a proposal, this, this proposal. But Kaza, did you want to uh, report back on the uh, training that you Um, sure. <laughs> uh, well, we, I mean, we, like I said, we have regular monthly workshops in the community. Um, actually, this past month we did four of them, um, one for low-income youth. Uh, two in the jails and one in the community. Um, one person from Obao came, um, Bill Bank. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, great workshop. Um, I'm not sure if folks have questions, but it's this our regular ongoing work. So. Okay, so the proposal. Um, so, uh, yes. before we go on with that, and I'm not sure if this, this is an appropriate time, but I'm just curious if there's been I, I, 
I became more recently with the work that um, occupied Burma Heights is doing. And is there efforts to bring these things into coordination? Like Obao is making efforts to bring coordinate. I mean, I think there's value in coordinated effort and making, bringing things together. Well, we um, we haven't really worked with Occupy Myrtle just because, um, like, resources, you know. Yeah. Um, Occupy Bernal has a spoke that usually comes to Action Council, okay. Stardust, and so we keep abreast of what's going on, but um, we really um, just haven't um, zeroed in on Occupy Bernal. I guess one, also distance, um, a lot of about people are, well, some of us are in Oakland, and Occupy Bernal is kind of a little farther away, and um, yeah, just resources, but it's definitely another thing that we could do, and Occupy Bernal is going to be involved in the Action Council September 17th action together. Okay, so moving on to the proposal. So. The Action Council uh, is planning an Occupy Anniversary Day of Action on September 17th. And it's going to consist of a number of uh, different activities, uh, all-day occupation of, of banks. Ooh. And this is mainly in San Francisco. It is in San Francisco, and kind of an aside that this is what I'd like us to talk about at some point. How Oakland can be added in. Uh, but in any case, so there's going to be different um, occupying the banks by the different groups, I believe, or they're going to each take a, a bank branch. Um, and then there's going to be a mass convergence at five, and there's going to be, uh, let's see, um, several things like celebration. Uh, a debt burning. People are going to be invited to bring their debts or symbols of their debts. And burning the debts or shredding their debts or um, composting their debts and maybe they'll be deposited at banks, burnt, shredded, whatever. Um, and then there's going to be a march and a closing ceremony. So Oval was invited to uh, co be a co-sponsor of this. What day of the week? Excuse me, what day is of the week? Is this? Monday, September 17th is Monday, right. um, which is the one-year anniversary of Occupy. Oval has been invited to co-sponsor or to be a sponsor of this all-day action. So that's what the proposal is to, for Oval to co-sponsor. Who else is involved? <laughs> uh, so far, um, four closure fighters of Occupy Bernal, mm -hmm. um, Ace and Occupy Noe, Occupy Education agreed to be a um, co-sponsor, the Occupy SF Direct Action Working Group, and the Occupy Community Not Commodity Group are current co-sponsors. Mm -hmm. That's good. So that's the proposal. Uh, so now let's open it up to any clarifying questions, concerns. What does it entail in co sponsorship? What does what one mm -hmm. do? What are the duties of the co sponsor? It's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, so, for one, uh, the OGA will be on any flyers or materials. Um, and also we will be participating and, and contributing to the day. Um, yeah, doing outreach on um, what happened on, for the January 20th shutdown um, was each um, group or affinity group basically chose a target um, to focus on and to shut down. So they had, you know, people with their arms in the pipe whatever you call those things, um, in front of the banks, and they were able to shut down the banks with just like six, five or six people in front, because banks have certain rules that if there's certain disruptions, they have to shut down. So 
on J20, we were able to shut down a lot of banks. So affinity groups and nonprofits, each each group kind of chose a target bank and made some kind of action in front of it. So there and there were also there was music, there was the Brass Liberation Orchestra and marching bands and kind of like a festival in the financial district of shutting down the banks. So we might, through the Strat Action Working Group, want to work on more specifics of our target or a more specific action in conjunction with the day. Is that how the day is, is being uh, formulated by all the groups, that it, that it would function that way, if, or, or that hasn't been talked about on that level yet? Or? Well, I didn't go to the most recent, Janet yeah. was there today, so that, what I was talking about was based on what we did on January yeah. 20th, and I'm just assuming they'll use the same model, but did they talk about that? Oh, they didn't they? talk about the actual um, part of occupying banks, um, but there will be a training uh, in uh, Golden Gate Park, there's another action, human being, uh, in Golden Gate Park on September 15th and 16th, and so um, training for that, oh, I'm sorry, for the uh, Occupying the Banks was offered by somebody who was at Action Council. Um, and, but the uh, period from 5 o'clock from the the, the mass convergence from that time point on was discussed at Action Council today, and I listed the different things that are going to happen: the celebration and the debt burning and the launching. I love the debt burning idea. <laughs> That's great. Um, I, I have a question about this. So, is this? Uh, I'm familiar with some of the groups that you mentioned, but not all of them. Is this explicitly? A nonviolent action on, uh, the, on all the stuff that you know, posters and flyers and so mm -hmm. forth. Well, well, just Action Council does have a nonviolence policy. Mm -hmm. It's not as explicit as OBAL, mm -hmm. but um, what that that would be part of what OBAL would contribute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Action Council does have a nonviolence action agreement, so all their actions, if you participate, you are ostensibly participating in a nonviolent action. So, is there any kind of plan if people are violent at one of these events? Um, did you hear any? They didn't talk about that, but that's something that um, our nine. Uh, well, an OBAO nonviolent working group would be good to work on. And that was discussed a couple of weeks ago when we had GA. Some, some ideas like that, what the nonviolent working group would be doing. You mentioned a training. What, what is the date? I, I don't have the specifics. Okay. Okay. So, any other questions or? I guess another question would be like, do you guys know about specific messages you want to send on that day? I mean, I know the general message to banks, but what is there any? I don't know if it gets that specific, or if it's if there are things you're going to focus on as far as their role. Well, um, just a couple of things. Um, in uh, I know um, the ideological liberation working group, Jane's group, which did the financial crimes cards um, for January 20th. They help put together messaging about the crimes of the banks. And um, they do have a few um, informational pamphlets out about, I know they have one on Bank of America. Do they have one on Goldman Sachs? Oh, on Goldman so, yeah. Sachs. Um, so <clears throat> I'm sure that that group, and if you want to um, join that group, uh, we should get your name and information for Jane to add you to the Google group. But um, they, yeah, they do a lot of research and on um, facts and messaging issues. And um, one of the things that we talked about in strategy action is um, there's a group in Oakland that's targeting the issue of swaps. 
how um, you know Oakland and San Francisco and all these municipalities across the country are paying millions of dollars in astronomical interest rates to these same private banks and it's draining funds from education, social programs, and it's basically part of the same systemic um, abuse and manipulation by the banks to transfer wealth from the people to their pockets. So we definitely, I know Na was involved, she's been, she came to one or two of the OBAL meetings and she's involved with that group. They had an action at Goldman Sachs a few weeks ago. So we definitely like to connect up with that group and hopefully we can coordinate. Yeah. Okay, so, so let me just also add that um, one of the things that was talked about today at Action Council uh, for this particular day to um, bring out is kind of redefining who we are in the eyes of the public, who Occupy is and what Occupy is in the eyes of the public. And, but there's also, there is going to be a strong focus on debt, uh, many levels of debt. Um, so I was just wondering, like, um, uh, to be involved with that, you go to the uh, Strategy Action Working Group meetings? Yeah, it's um, tonight at, after this meeting at okay. 7. Okay. And everyone's welcome. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, I mean, I can't be at that meeting, but I do, I, I think it'd be really important to connect up with, so the, you know, some churches in Oakland have been involved in that swap thing, and I have a connection with Daniel Buford yeah. at Allen Temple. Mm -hmm. And he was not willing to work with Occupy Open because of the balance. He may be willing to work with OBAL. But that should be a planned way to approach him. So I'm more than willing to talk with somebody Wonderful. about doing that. But I don't think we should go off half coffee. It's very, you know, I think we need to do it in a very professional manner okay. for OBAL. And I'm not necessarily the person to do it, but I can help. Um, what else? I was going to say, okay, never mind. I actually I realize I'm facilitating, but I'm also I also presented the proposal. It's kind of like uh, uh, conf not quite conflict of interest, but I'd like to get back to the proposal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is you know what we're really talking about is whether Oval would be a co-sponsor of this day connected to National Council. So I know this isn't the place to have this conversation, but if because I'm, I'm supportive of co-sponsoring the day, whatever. Um, but I would really want to push for um, like the swap thing because to me a lot of Occupy, like the conflicts in Occupy, are arguments over tactics and messaging before we've agreed on what the goal is, which is to me it's completely backwards. And the swap thing is a concrete goal, especially in Oakland, right? Because Oakland is actually paying every year. Whereas like debts, it's cool, but there's not a concrete goal associated with it. So it's like, get the message out about debts, get as many people out into the streets as possible, but then it becomes that one day action. Whereas if there's a concrete goal, then it becomes more than the one day and you can build that long-term strategy. So I'd really want to push the group into thinking more about swaps or something like concrete that we can tie it into. I would add that we really need that information that is available in the Action Council, is it? We have people who are doing research on swaps, and the various abuses on the part of the banks, and it should be concrete. We should have things to put on our signs, and we should have things to pass out. And maybe somebody should get up with the mic and announce periodically what the heck we're doing. Here. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. we, have, we should have relevant slogans and so forth. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, this would be, because I'm thinking, how can we hook Oakland into it, be through the swaps? And the work is already established mm -hmm. yes. through the churches, through Roots. Roots is also involved in it. Did you say Roots? Roots. It was Occupy the Hood that then became Roots. Mm -hmm. And, and um, Roots hasn't met in like three weeks or so, they have four, four weeks. Do you have connection with them? Yeah, I was really involved when we oh. were still meeting, and then we had okay. a connection, so. Well, maybe you guys I'd, I'd be happy to try to usher that connection. That but. way. Can I, can I, um, would, would you be able to come to the Strat Action meeting at 7? Uh, remind me when? Uh, tonight at 7 after this meeting. 
I will stay for a little while. If for like briefly, so okay. we can talk more cool. about how to make that connection. And you too, Charlotte. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay, so what I'm wondering about is do, do we want to add in some kind of an amendment to this proposal to include Oakland or uh, something involving Oakland? Um, well, at the last GA, I think you were there too, there was a proposal where they were asking for money for some anniversary event and I mean I have that was like my last Occupy thing I did and that was maybe a month ago. Was that here? Yeah it was at the Oakland GA. Oh, Occupy, Oakland. Occupy oh. Oakland. So they're planning something but I have no idea if they're still going through with that or what it's going to look like or what the action agreements are. There might be something on their website. Um, I'm sorry I can't be more helpful, but I think Oakland is plenty. Thank you. Uh, so, again, back to the proposal. It's about whether we OBAL will be a, a sponsor mm -hmm. of this day. Yes. I think, I think that uh, for me, I would say yes, given what I've heard and hammer out the details. I know there's not a lot of time, but whether it focus, ends up focusing on swaps or not, it's obviously going to focus on something that's going to be relevant to social change in this day and age. It's about banks and financial institutions. You know, so, yes. <laughs> I'm entirely in agreement with Chris uh, Luke and Joe and Bathroom. this gentleman, which there should be a different objective um, that is advertised and is, that is made apparent mm -hmm. um, by us, by the signs that we carry and the slogans we have. And I, and I'm, 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 in, I'm in favor of uh, the sponsorship. And I think the details of the sponsorship should be made clear on the proposal. What it entails, what we're going to do, what the sponsors would use. Okay, great, thanks. So, yeah, yeah. Um, does anybody have any more concerns? Concerns or suggestions? <laughs> for, the, for the proposal itself, not necessarily what we're going to be doing mm -hmm. during that day. Mm -hmm. So, it's about sponsoring. Yes. Yeah. So, so um, sorry, well, as the proposer, do you envision like what capacity? this group would have towards sponsoring? Like, would we just be in charge of handing out a bunch of flyers, or would we be putting on an event that day? I think it could be all or, yeah, oh, all okay. of that. It's, it's open. Mm -hmm. OK, so is, does anybody want to block this? And can we do a show of hands of up, up, down, or middle about what you, how you feel about it? Okay, cool. So it's unanimous. Oh, Great. So <laughs> <laughs> it still works. <laughs> <laughs> it still works. <laughs> so we're done with the proposal, and so now let's move on to discussions. So. Uh, the, the topics, first one would be court support for occupied defendants. Can, can, can I just make one more suggestion for the, for around the um, September 17th thing for Oakland? Would be um, to contact, if it's still in, at all involved, the, the education committee that have been working on the West, the um, Westlake School because there was an absolute tie-in between that and the banks, getting money, money having to be paid to the banks from the school district, right? Am I wrong in remembering that? Um, isn't there a connection between the banks and the schools in Oakland? The schools that got closed? Yeah. Um, you know, it's really complicated. I mean, okay. Yeah, the okay, banks are, I mean, take it back. Westlake went into everything. <laughs> Westlake, there was a single. Oh, the yeah. Yeah. Being closed down Lake by Lake Lake Lake. Oh, Lakeview. Lake Lake. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. I know it's yeah. You know what? I'll, if, I'll, we can talk to I mean, Anton knows more about it. I don't know that much about it. I mean, I know the issue is very complicated. I think it would probably be a stretch to say the banks were responsible for the school closures. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I'm sure they I'm sure they uh, were involved in some way. So. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. 
I'll call on myself. I think it's not a stretch at all that, uh, for example, the swaps, the money oh, yeah. that would go to uh, pay the banks mm -hmm. go to the schools. So yeah. I mean, it's uh, oh, yeah. or something else. Like that. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I would. Okay, that would yeah. So I wanted to just also mention something about what we're trying to build with Obel culture and um, being a do-ocracy, D-O-ocracy. And that means that people who get involved are willing to do stuff and not only talk about it. So um, I'm very sensitive about this in terms of when people say, oh, we should do this, or you should do this, and <laughs> great ideas, but then it goes out in the air. And so um, maybe if you're thinking of saying something like that, maybe you might volunteer to do it rather than assuming somebody else might, or, or at least try to get somebody specific to do it, to follow up on it. So anyway. That, uh, <laughs> I have to do something. Are we still discussing this or should we table discussing this at 10%? Yeah, let's, let's, um, yeah, we're through with that already. We'll, we'll get to the discussion group, uh, discussion okay. topic, and, um, then we'll see if there's time to get back to that. And, uh, just, just one more point of information or something like that, um, <laughs> regarding what Charlotte was talking about, um, the ideological liberation working group, like that's their main focus is to get like specific messaging out and make sure that when there's an action that the information and the reason and the goals are out there. So um, we'll definitely, that Jane, you know, Jane, she's been very involved in OBAL and so we'll definitely be coordinating with her group, they're an OBAL group to work on that. Is there a sign up sheet for them? Um, we can pass that around too. Well, the outreach is still trying to go around here, <laughs> uh, which hasn't quite even got a signature, unfortunately. And we'll get that to Jean. And they, they do a lot on Google groups. So, you know, they'll kind of put a topic up, like, let's say if it swaps and, you know, kind of break it down, like, and have people submit research and then once people start, you know, getting up to speed on the research, then they'll formulate like some kind of document or flyer or pamphlet from that and it's kind of participatory. They meet on Tuesday nights at 7.30 at the Starbucks across from the 101 Market Street encampment that's still still going on. Um, <laughs> yeah, it revived on also February 20th. Also known as Occupy. She likes to call it Occupy because <laughs> ever since Occupy in San Francisco started, people would kind of use that Starbucks. So that's near Embarcadero? Yes. Yeah. Oh. It's right across the street from the Marriott. Okay. Um, no, the. Uh, that's Marriott, yeah. I'm non union Marriott. Oh. The one where the cops hit out when they were beating us up. <laughs> Okay, so we're ready to move on to the discussion topic. Mm -hmm. And Clark actually proposed this, so I'd like you to maybe uh, introduce it. Okay, um, I was watching KTV Union uh, stream the other day, and they were mentioning about an Occupy Oakland protester who was sentenced to a uh, year in jail for felony vandalism. And it brought to mind uh, of some of the incidents that happened on May 1st around the 888 uh, Turk Street uh, takeover and uh, one gentleman in particular who was arrested for uh, felony assault on a police officer um, I think he's, he's looking at another felony um, for that related to that arrest um, and he was kinda hanging out at 101 down at the Federal Reserve down in San Francisco and uh, in particular in his case and he's looking at a possible 20 years in jail and I was thinking to myself, well, and there was other issues too that um, I was thinking about was that I was watching on one of the streams of the OSF sponsored protests a couple of weeks ago where they, for all of a sudden, they like changed directions where they were marching out, left a bunch of people behind. It was a total, like, you know, I'm very critical of any of the activities that 101 organizes because um, they don't look after a people's safety, personal safety. And when somebody comes to an Occupy event, or as a, a demonstrator that's supporting our cause, that we as a group of Zobal, uh, we have a moral responsibility 
and uh, to safeguard that particular person who's there, we have to look out for their personal well-being um, and also uh, the consequences of people's actions, the consequences of what we have organized and what we have brought into the world. And when people get arrested, that is one direct consequence of what happens to people when they get arrested, you know, when they come to a demonstration. I'm not saying that everybody that goes to a demonstration that gets arrested, I'm necessarily also going to feel like I have a responsibility for, particularly if that person was in full command of their mental faculties and made a conscious choice to do the action that they did, right? I will support them, but uh, I don't feel like our responsibility goes quite that far. But um, in terms of one individual that we're talking about, um, he definitely does not need to be in jail. He's, he has mental, he's mentally ill, um, and um, he doesn't need to be locked up for the rest of his life in the California penal system. I think I'm going to go visit with him this week to do a psychological evaluation and, uh, and just to talk with him and find out how he's feeling. I know he's in solitary confinement right now. Um, you have to make an appointment to go see him. He's in administrative detention. Uh, and so I'm going to cry and kind of talk to him and see where he's at. I, um, the day, anyway, getting back to pe the people's responsibility. Now, for many, many years, I've been active on the medical cannabis world, and as any other groups, more than even Occupy, uh, we have been repressed and oppressed by the, the system because by mere possession, uh, for many, many years, we were always considered outright criminals. So, um, consequently, there's a lot of legal issues and a lot of arrests that have been made. I myself have been arrested quite a few times. Um, I've always managed to beat the charges of uh, whatever I was charged with with marijuana. But um, we always made sure that, and in, in terms of medical cannabis, that if somebody got arrested for it, especially if it was somebody who was a uh, dispensary or somebody who was providing marijuana growers or something like that to patients, that we made sure that we did court support for those people because we felt like we had a responsibility to them. And uh, I got real wrapped up into it myself. I personally took it as my personal thing as an activist and I would often show up in federal court on people's behalf just to show up. Because when somebody's in custody and they're in lockup, they don't get to see too many people, especially um, like Jesse um, doesn't get to see too many people. He, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have any visitors at all. And he spends 23 and a half hours a day being locked up in a little cubicle. Jesse's the guy we're talking about? Yeah, Jesse's one of the people that we're talking about. I know that there's somebody else that's also serving time in jail right now. And uh, anyway, getting, and so, uh, I've been very, I've, I've, during this time, um, I've been approached by people, I get approached by people nowadays um, for legal advice on how to approach with their marijuana cases, what to do, especially in San Francisco because I have a lot of knowledge. I work for the Northern California Service League, um, which specializes in getting people released on own recognizance bail. And so I used to go into the, I used to go into 850 and go in and, and interview people to get them out on, you know, on bail. And uh, so I have a lot of experience with the court system. I know a lot of attorneys. Um, and I've actually been able to, I've actually had a real effect on the world by keeping people out of jail. I've kept a lot of people out of jail, um, especially when it's a, a state or a local matter, as because we're protected under the law here. But federal, federal I had mixed, mixed success because we're actually not allowed to make any arguments in court at all about anything to do with medical marijuana. So generally, when you go to federal court, you know you're going to lose automatically because it's a kangaroo court. So, but I've had a lot of success, and I've kept a lot of people out of jail, and I feel like I can put a lot of energy, and I'm behind doing something like this because I only live four blocks from 850 Bryant, and it's pretty easy for me to go down there on a court date, on somebody's court date, as long as I know who's going to be appearing in court and when, um, because there's a lot of logistics involved with this court because this stuff drags on for a long time, and generally the longer that it drags on, the better it is for the defendant because... Uh, there's a lot of things that happen with the court system. Evidence gets lost. Uh, police officers retire from the force. Uh, there's all you know, records get lost. All kinds of different things. So generally, it's always witnesses disappear. Uh, so it's always to the benefit of the defendants when these court cases drag out. So and I don't, and so uh, I developed a strategy while I was doing uh, working for medical cannabis patients on a way to make it a really effective ways of court support. And courts, I feel myself is that I was able to change court support into being a draining, monetary, like monetary draining, physically draining, mentally draining process, into making a, a turning it into a real positive action, direct action, right in the in the uh, 
in the environs of uh, people that are seeking to lock us up and put us in jail for our activities and right on their turf and there's nothing more satisfying so um, uh, so there's a lot of logistics involved in it and generally when somebody goes for charges it's nice to have a, a small crowd when they first get arrested because um, when you're in court and you deal with the you've been dealing with it like I have there's the staff that works the courts are there all the time for everything right and so once they get to know that that defendant yeah I'm trying to go faster once they get to know that that defendant has support outside of the courtroom and outside of his public defender or even outside of his own attorney well then they tend to view that defendant he gets treated differently in the court the judge sees it much differently and generally um, you're able to get rulings and things like that more favorable rulings so um, um, so, so there usually there's only two or three times when you actually need to go in support of people. The rest of the time it's people show up and there's like motions being filed back and forth. And, uh, and that part I can, I can logistically organize and make sure that we only want people really showing up on the dates that, we're, that are important, like when we go to trial or something like that. So and I think that's a real a needed thing here in Occupy. And uh, um, I didn't want to come out with an outright proposal because I didn't know any people that were interested in it. Um, I've taken, I've already taken a lot of flack for this. I'm, I was flamed, that's part of the reason I was late, is I'm getting majorly flamed by people, especially for my support of Jesse. Um, and because uh, a lot of people, he's crazy, why do you want to spend all your time doing something like this? You know, and it's just like, well, you know, when somebody, like I said, somebody shows up for our demonstration, we accept them as part of our group, like even like casually, that we do have a responsibility to those people. So that's pretty much all I'm going to say about it. And also, one other thing is, I'm unfortunately won't be able to help out with September uh, action because I'm going to New York and I'm going to be in Wall Street uh, down there. So, you know, I'm really excited about this. Thank you. So, how about we Sorry, honey. I would like some pizza. No. Would you guys help me out with some pizza? I'm sorry, honey. We're ever in the middle of Anything. Get Okay. Sorry. Thank you. All right. Pizza, drink. They don't have fries. Okay. So, um, I'd like to just start. Uh, so, I what I'm hearing is uh, that there is a need for like a, a legal working group. Right. Um, and this is, to me, not something that some of us might want, but this goes with the kind of work that we do, direct action. Uh, and uh, even with nonviolent direct action, it's possible that people will get arrested. And so it's something that we need to think about. And other other sorry other uh, no more change for pizza. No. other direct pizza? action work that I've done with other groups they actually have something structured as part of the planning of a direct action where there's uh, lawyers that uh, are a set of lawyers like Look, that, or lawyers though. Hill, uh, that they're in contact with and preparing for bail funds and and um, other kind of uh, legal support and documentation, like any live streaming or video, or anything like that. some of that is needed. But that all would be needed in a, you know, <coughs> needed to be worked out in like a legal working group rather than one person would just be, uh, when it happens, it's, it's something to prepare for. So, okay, so Charlotte? I'd be in favor of uh, developing such a working group. Yeah, I want to ask you, uh, medical cannabis is legal, right? It's, yeah, but still people get arrested for it all the time. Why? Uh, oh, for instance, San Mateo County doesn't recognize medical cannabis, cannabis laws at all. And if you're caught with any medical any cannabis at all, you can be charged with it under the state of California. They don't recognize patients. And that's in San Mateo. So, Isn't there a card that people right. carry? Well, there's a state card, and under state law, you're supposed to be able to have up to eight ounces on your person. Oh, yeah. 
But uh, um, so like I say, certain counties don't even recognize the law. And uh, so there's always cases, I, I'm always hearing about people all the time, you know, and I had to step back from the cannabis movement for a while because I wanted to move on to other things that I wanted to organize around. So yeah. My I, same question you know. to you. Uh, do you deal just with medical cannabis cases or all cases of unjust um, Well, I generally, um, when I do court support, it's mostly like when I was when I was doing it a few years back, it was mostly all cannabis cases. Mm -hmm. Although I did um, do some cases involving uh, um, other drugs, but mainly drugs at the time, mm -hmm. um, uh, because that's generally what most people go to jail for nowadays, mm -hmm. and uh, they use that as a as a tool of repression, especially especially here in Oakland and. and and New York and other places, um, because they find out, you know, they they go after the black and brown youth that like to smoke pot, and they use that as a way of putting them in jail and getting them into the legal system. And once you're in, in the legal system, especially out here in California, once they get their little clutches on you, it takes many many years to totally unentangle yourself. So always be careful, and especially be careful when you're at a demonstration, you know, <laughs> because you don't want to let somebody else. You know, in the spirit of the moment, which happens with everybody, you know, that's how I ended up burning a cop car one time, was in the spirit of the moment. And it was pretty handy to do. And uh, so, you know, you got to watch out because, you know, you have to, you know, check yourself. But anyway, sorry. Thank you. Okay, Sam? Yeah, I, I, um, I really agree with your point that if we're a movement, then part of being a movement is being responsible for one another. And I think just the kind of bottom line of Occupy is that message that rather than, you know, just going out and being greedy for oneself, that, that we're trying to develop a new, you know, society of values around caring about one another. Um, and in terms of uh, the nonviolent piece, then I... I would just want to be sure that we're, um, for lack of a better term, that we're that we're vetting, uh, who, you know, as best as we can, who we're supporting in terms of court, you know, the court procedures. If it's somebody who wasn't upholding the values of nonviolence, then I think that it, it it's not somebody who I want to support unless it's a situation like you're talking about if somebody who's got a mental illness or something like that mm -hmm. then i think that's a, an issue on a case-by-case -case basis to look at for sure but certainly for people who are espousing nonviolence and really you know were arrested for illegitimate reasons then absolutely i think you know or arrested for for you know, legally legitimate reasons, but structurally illegitimate reasons, right. you know, right. then absolutely. I think it's crucial, and it's sad that that doesn't, has not been happening enough. And you kind of have to keep on the... Yes. Yeah, okay. um, yeah, I don't want to... Um, yeah, I mean, I, um, I thought it was a really good... Um, um, I think it's a really good idea. I thought the Coffee Not Cops was a really good thing that they had in, uh, in Oakland. Um, coffee it? Not Cops, that's what they had, that was like the court support, when yeah. people had court dates that have Coffee Not Cops, like in the, like, so people would meet at like 8.30 and have free coffee and donuts in front of the court, and then they'd, courthouse, and then they'd open the doors and people would go in and, um, support, and, um, and also I thought, just from my own personal experience, just when I, because I got arrested for the, um, the move-in day thing, um, the rides back from Santa Rita was really important. I thought, just like walk, like when you walk out the doors and there's like a bunch of people like waiting there, that was a really good thing. Mm -hmm. And um, um, what else was there? Um, I don't know. And I thought like the the vetting process thing. I don't know. I mean, because I worry about that. Because I mean, the move-in day. You know, I mean, because it's I don't know. I mean, I would I would want to know more about how that would work. So it's just like you know, because they arrest people for such. You know, even if they have engaged, in, they, who, who, who do, how do we know they actually engage in violence? You know, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, and how do we even define that? I mean, I don't know. Just, well, I mean, I guess we have defined it, but I mean, how do we even like, because um, it's not even like true what they say a lot of the time. So, you know, yeah. What you say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, you done? Yeah. Okay. So, Beth is next. Um, yeah, I think it would be great if Clark could kind of. 
get this going. Um, I kind of tried to do some, but I've just become overwhelmed, so I, I can't really offer anything. But another um, thing that we had wanted to do and didn't get done was kind of um, a, a no, there, there are no your rights pamphlets from ACLU and NLG, but maybe a know your rights um, specifically tailored to the issues that come up with an Occupy protest or even there's still a 24-hour protest going on. So, you know, we, we haven't really broken down the sit-lie law and the anti-lodging laws that are still being used against people and have like a know your rights thing that might be something else the legal working group could take on if people are willing to put some time in. Um, a couple of things. Um, I, I've seen cases in where there's we, people have mobilized to support someone in court, and that pissed off the judge and had a negative consequence on the case. So whatever action does happen, I want to make sure it's coordinated with the legal counsel. Yeah, it's always, yeah. Um, and attorneys. also, uh, I definitely agree about the, um, you know, as much as I'm opposed to the way the criminal justice system is, works at all in this country, um, I also get frustrated at you know, there's just been too many Occupy protests where someone will break a window or throw something at a, at a cop and then get arrested and then pretend like they're the victim. And I just, I'm not down with that at all. Um, and if that's the case, I'd much rather, you know, support the kid on my block who got 20 years for selling weed to support his baby type of thing. Um, so I definitely want to find out more about the situation. As, as understanding that it's almost impossible to get to the real truth because of what they, what they say. Um, I also do want to put a plug in for, um, just being real about capacity. Um, I think one of the reasons why our movements don't work is because we're in such an ADD culture where you know, we just jump from issue to issue. Every time someone gets killed by the police, every time someone gets arrested, we just jump to that issue and we can't sustain anything. So OBAL is still building, it's still pretty small, so let's just be very real about our capacity. Um, that said, I'd like to hear more about the case. Okay. Um, that's one thing to see. I, and my experience is that I'm, I've been doing this for 40 years, so there's pretty much no question of me losing interest in something, especially when one thing that one thing that should be brought up when you're doing legal stuff, and you agree to take somebody's case or work on their case for them and help them out. Well, I know lawyers are bound. When you once you take somebody on as a client, you're bound to represent them, come hell or high water. It doesn't matter if they hate you, they want to whatever, until they decide that they don't want to have you as an attorney for anymore. So. Usually when I pick up somebody's case, um, I know that it's going to be a commitment of s several years sometimes. And uh, so I don't have a problem with that. And then, uh, but like I said, yeah, but I think our first thing to do here as far as OBAL uh, would be to generate some kind of database of people that were arrested. Um, because I'm going to have to go and call up uh, the, uh, uh, the public defender's office tomorrow and deal with them uh, probably, for a long, probably for a while. I'm probably actually going to have to go over there and talk with them and find out how many cases were caught by Occupy because what we I know as a group that we absolutely have no idea of everybody that's in court and uh, and that's why I felt that this was important because there's lots and lots of people that are falling through the cracks and one person I really know for sure who's actually doing time and been sentenced was Pirate Mike um, got a year in jail for uh, for trespassing at the 888 Turk Street okay I'm not sure if he was or not, but that's what I, that was my understanding. Um, you know. uh, kind of information, um, yeah, did you know who it was? I, I don't think you got a year in jail, but the trial has been postponed. Okay. The last court date was um, Wednesday, the same day as the CCSF action. Okay. And um, if there's another court date, it was postponed, I think, a month, and there were four people facing that double, actually six people now, because they added two people who were cited and released. Um, apparently they added them, so there are six people, Julia, Nick, Pirate Mike, I think Zega, Dietrich, and, um, and Amber are all um, going to be facing a trial, um, which again, the date is postponed for a month, and uh, none of them were involved in any violence. Um, they are accused of trespassing in an empty building um, owned by the archdiocese. 
and um, if we can get this legal work group going and you know show some support for them when their child does come up, I think that would be really valuable. Can you, can you repeat the date? Sorry. Oh, can you repeat the date when they're going to appear in court? Um, I don't know offhand. I just know that the uh, went on the fifteenth and it was postponed again. I believe it was for about a month, but we can bring the information to the next meeting. Okay. okay. I I'd like to say a few things. Um, I am concerned about the scope part of what you're talking about. I would want to focus to be going forward. Uh, for people who have been arrested in the past from occupiers all over, OBAR can't be responsible for that. Oh, I agree. We, that's what we don't have the capacity, and it's not what we're about. Just like we can't feed all 100 people, there are some people who are working on um, food programs, and yeah, it's a great thing if it's needed, but that's not, we can't do it, and that's not really what Occupy is about. But, uh, so, okay. so what? Okay, I'm, I'm in complete yet. disagreement. So I, I want, would like for the scope to be limited to going forward and to uh, OBAO's um, actions or actions that OBAO is involved with. So because we can't be responsible for other you don't think occupies. We, you don't think we should have been may grandfathered I, in? May I, wait, um, okay, I'm sorry, sorry. So another thing that I think maybe should be part of this effort would be training for people and you know like know your rights is one thing but uh, uh, there are um, actions or activities that people who go to actions aren't aware of that this might be arrestable or whatever. so maybe some training included that arrest prevention and that would maybe also be part of the nonviolent working group too. Okay, um, uh, this group wouldn't exist unless uh, uh, Occupy San Francisco happened and the split. Um, I think that we are responsible for stuff that happened before this group was formed. Uh, not saying that we should take on a direct responsibility for everybody that's been arrested in Occupy. Um, and I also think that you're, uh, I don't think you're uh, really clear about what it means to do court support for people. Um, it doesn't mean you have to show up for every court date when every time somebody goes into court because most of the time it just gets held over until the next court date. And I know that filing a motion for discovery takes at least four court appearances before it even gets even decided what even is going to be included in a motion for discovery. So what I'm talking about basically is in our working group, see I can monitor the court calendar once I know people that are, that are facing charges. And by monitoring the court calendar, well, then I can find out what's happening in people's cases. And then when it's important for somebody to show up, like like I'm like when they go to trial, right? That, or when they're picking the jurors, so that's really important to have people there. Other than that, every once in a while, it would be good to maybe well, you know it just be good. Night. What I'm talking about basically, um, maybe would entail would be having on the website a calendar, a legal calendar, so people would know not only people that are doing court support, but also the defendants themselves. That are that have to show up for court because um, on one case I I caught years and years ago I had to appear in court 17 times before they dropped the charges and I got to tell you that if I didn't have my lawyer calling me up the night before and the day that morning that sometimes I would have missed court and if you miss court one time you get a warrant put out for your arrest and then you're not eligible either bail goes up tremendously um, and just all that kind of stuff. So this would be just more of a service kind of thing, I, I believe, too. Um, but um, but I know what you're saying about starting off with the new as well, right? And I really agree with that as, as well. And we have to start somewhere. But just I just I feel a moral obligation, and I'm not really I'm going to continue to do this regardless of whether OBAU OBAL decides they want to do it or not, right? Because it's well within my purview, and it's something I like to do anyway. And I, you know, I like going down 850, and I like, I hate cops, but I like being around them, you know. And I like, I like having an effect on their, I like having what I really, what gets me, is that I have an effect upon police officers' behavior. That when they know that there's going to be some asshole down at 850 Bryant that's following up on all the cases, right? Because that's our problem. We don't follow up with this stuff, right? We follow up on all the cases, 
and they know somebody's watching them, and they know that there's attorneys involved, and all this other shit, you can best believe that when they go to pull out that baton to strike somebody in the head, that it's going to be going through the back of their mind about whether they're going to catch some flack for it, right? Because I've, took, I've taken police officers off the street, like undercover cops, that I've witnessed beating the shit out of people on the street, right, for like a little tiny fucking rock of cocaine, right? And just like, like, so I know that this is a really, really, really effective way of dealing with the police department. And it works a lot better than running up and yelling incoherent epitaphs at the police department, right. you know, about how much you hate them and all this other stuff, right? Because the only way you're going to make it stick and the only way that we have any control over that behavior of the police department and the way they act during demonstrations is through the legal system, unfortunately. But at least with the legal system, we can have lawyers, right? And, I, you know, it's like when some of these cases go to trial, you know, get ready to go to trial, I'm going to try and contact some of these people and see if they would like to have a trial attorney, somebody who does that for a living, to represent them pro bono, right? And so I have all these resources, so, um, but, I, you know, it's like I would really help if we had the support of the group here, you know? And um, I'm also going to be seeking out support from other groups. So. Um, yeah. I, I really appreciate your perspective on this a lot. Um, and I think it's something that needs to be talked about, and it's going to continue to need to be talked about. Um, my partner is the most nonviolent human I've ever met, and she's been arrested 18 times um, for completely nonviolent protests. I mean, you know, I'm not somebody who hates police as a blanket statement or anything like that. I don't, but I know that, that there's a heck of a lot of bad actions that happen from police, and um, that we're going to get arrested somewhere, somehow, so you know when you're through, through no fault of our own, we're gonna, we're, all of us here, if we continue on on this path, are going to get arrested. And that's why this is a very important topic, if for no other reason. So uh, building solidarity from our own empathy in advance, if you will, that, you know, knowing that we're going to get arrested, to empathize with those who have been. Um, and, and I think it's very important. I, I also think that a lot of complexities have been brought into the mix of the discussion about do we do this going forward, is it just for OBAL, how much involvement do we have, uh, you know, what I talked about, about the vetting process, whatever, there's so many complexities to it, so um, I appreciate the conversation and I think it's just going to take more and more conversation and probably going to be an imperfect kind of ongoing uh, formulation of what we're going to do, but I'm definitely behind what you're saying. Charlotte? <coughs> um, I know from personal experience that a watch cop is an intimidating cop, mm -hmm. uh, because I've experimented with that myself. Yeah. Um, um, a lad came walking up my street, he was a different neighborhood. And he looked, he didn't look like the kids in my neighborhood, but the kids that I taught in Richmond. And the cop came up and started started bugging him, asking him questions. And I was dressed for work. And I s stared at him throughout the entire procedure. And I could see the loss of arrogance, uh, the careful decorum that replaced his hostility. Because I was standing there. I thought, whoa, this is powerful. This is something else, right? Um, I think that the people in prison are probably um, of all of our citizens, the most abandoned, and the most helpless, and the most alone, and the most forgotten. And I think about this frequently. I think you're doing a great, fantastic work. And I wish you had a committee to back you. And maybe if Obao gets big enough, you know, a committee of that kind of Yeah. And I'd serve on such a committee. Well, I have most of the resources already. Right. Yeah. Okay. You got so it going on already. Yeah. Um, yeah, I totally support it, and I would be very happy for Ova to have that working group, even if it starts out. Well, I guess t technically we're supposed to have three, but I'm sure if Charlotte wants to be on it and someone else, um, or just do what you're doing and people will join you, I think it's really important. I think it's been a gap. I know I learned a lot about the justice system and 
even though I went to law school, but I never studied criminal law specifically. And um, just being in Santa Rita for two days after J28, and they didn't even process you for two days, so you were basically disappeared. And all you did was, like I know in my case, all I did was walk with a, a march, and I got put in Santa Rita for two days for marching. Um, and I just, all these things I didn't know, like that you have to sit under fluorescent lights in a holding cell for, well, I guess it's not always, but in that case, it was under fluorescent lights in a holding cell for two days, being fed bologna sandwiches and I'm vegan. And, you know, the joint bathroom where everyone's watching you, people were denied medications. And then when I tried to visit Pirate Mike, I found out at San Bruno that, um, you can only go on the weekend. They can't even get visitors during the week. And if you want to go on the weekend, you have to get there at like 5 in the morning to even get on the list. We got there at like 8.30 in the morning, and we were like, sorry, the list is closed. So you're basically, and I, I thought these were basic human rights issues that you're, I thought if you're in prison or jail, or you get, you get to be visited. I thought you get the lights turned out at night so you could sleep, or at least, you know, I was in a holding cell for two days. I didn't even have a bed or a blanket. People were freezing in there. So I think this is a really important issue, and I'm really glad it's a big gap that needs to be filled. Okay, so I'm next, and then I'm tall. Anybody else want to be? Um... Okay, so uh, a few things. First, the laws are different in different cities. So uh, that's another thing to keep in mind um, and um, Oakland has a citizens police review board which mm, it's something I mean it's weak but and they're accepting applications by the way for citizens or people who work in Oakland just mentioning that so what I would recommend would be to continue um, to try to develop this thing and then maybe leading to writing a proposal and presenting yeah. it to us. And, but again, look at the uh, requirements for uh, right. starting a working group for an OBA working group. You can do a, a working group that's not an OBA working group on your own anyway. Um, okay, so, so let, let's take Antal and then we'll close up with Clark. Um, yeah, I mean, I actually don't think I have that place. Um, I guess I'm still a little bit unclear, like, um, just, yeah, because this is only my second OBAU group meeting, but, like, on, like, the process I get on how starting the working group and everything, and, um, I think, like, somebody said, like, it sounds like it's a huge topic, and it's probably very important, but it's not like a, um, but, yeah, it could go in so many different directions, so probably, like, um, depending on how much people, you know, I have, it's like a, find out where to start with it, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so it's uh, four minutes to seven, so why don't we close up the Eight. park? We didn't get to the other discussion topic, but next time. The next uh, GA is going to be in San Francisco at Rinkin Center, one Rinkin Center. Uh, you can see on the website how to get there. It's really easy. Yeah, yeah. One block. One block. So, uh, and then the week after, we're back to the and there's also working groups for working groups from 8 p.m. at yeah, I'm real glad at, um, at what people had to, uh, the response that I got here. I'm actually going to go around to, um, it was supposed to be announced at our Action Council meeting today, um, but I'm going around to a bunch of different groups um, that are Occupy related. I'm going to see if I can make it to an Occupy Oakland meeting as well and see if we can all pull our resources um, together um, uh, because uh, it would be better if we had more organizations involved with this, most definitely. And I'd also like to say for people that are watching online and also people that are here, if you know of a case of somebody who's facing charges, and I primarily focus in on what's going on in San Francisco, but if you know of somebody who's facing charges, could you please email me and let me know. Uh, my email is freemansullivan at gmail.com. And uh, let me know if you know of somebody that's facing charges. And that way I can at least get, um, I can find out the information about their case and find out when their court appearance is. Maybe maybe do a little pre-trial uh, or pre-court 
interview with them, you know, and, and stuff like that. And I'm more than willing to do this, you know, even now, you know, without the, the support of the group because it's something I believe in. And uh, so uh, if you know of anybody that's facing charges or anything, uh, just let me know. And if you have any contact information, please email me. Or you can call me, too. Uh, my number is 415-499-2780. And uh, if you wish to leave a message, I generally don't take messages on my cell, but my message number is 202-596-7247. And that's for also for the people that are out here that are watching the stream. And just to let you know and get it out there, because uh, I do believe in supporting people that are in, in our prisons. So thanks. Can you talk to the anti-repression committee here at Occupy Oakland? No, I haven't spoken to them yet. Because all they do is jail support. Okay. So, Maybe I should go talk to them. I think we should all attend this yeah. as a group. Please do. Yeah. 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 I think we should all attend this. I promise you'll be, you won't be disappointed. Yeah. Anyway, this is your... Your... Your uh, tireless activist for truth, justice, and the anarchist way. I'll be signing off. Uh, yes. I believe my next court appearance or my next appearance will be on Thursday at the Public Utilities Commission at the anti nuclear protest. Um, that starts at 9 a.m. That's at McAllister at Van Ness in San Francisco. Um, do hope to see you there at 9 a.m. Thursday morning. Until then. Yeah. Great job.